Well, how long have you been playing music? Uh, well, DOA, we've been together since 78, early 78 we started. And uh, so that's what, almost 30 years now. Just about 30 years. Wow. So yeah, it's a long time. Jesus. You were talking about a club show that uh, we just, uh, The Cave. Yeah. The Cave. The man's memory the is just incredible. Yeah. The Cave days and disco sucks. Well, and I remember, I, I, my take on The Cave was when I grew up was like, you know, they, that all the big bands play. My parents used to go to The Cave, you know, so here we are, we're in The Cave and we take this in. I, Joe already told you this one, but I mean, the, the reaction was so funny. I mean, I got to watch Johnny Rivers' road crew jump about six feet in the air when Disco Sucks came on full <laughs> blast through the PA. <laughs> you know, it was just hilarious. It was a great, great time. Um, flash ahead to uh, The Clash, 1979, October. Now, I've heard this story in great. various forms. And The Clash at that time, they were just starting to reach their pinnacle, if not right at the time. They were huge. The it combat was, rock days. London Calling. Uh, well, yeah, that's right. Calling. Exactly. It was London Calling time. And they'd just broken really huge. And, you know, when they were here before, you know, they'd been really cool with us. We took them out and showed Vancouver and partied with them, blah, blah, blah. So we figured we were in good, you know, buddy-buddy type thing. Yeah. We were on tour. We flew back. We played the night before in Saskatoon. We red-eyed back, you know, into Vancouver. We get here. Everything is a disaster right off the bat. You yeah. Know, no gear, no nothing. Yeah. We... We get down to the gardens, and instead of being able to sound check, I mean, the Clash were uh, up there teaching some uh, girls that they were with, had their kids with them, so they figured instead of us sound checking, it was better for them to teach their kids how to play drums and uh, guitar and stuff, <laughs> right? So we're getting, you know, a little more peeved and peeved along the way, and then uh, about 20 minutes into the set, the sound... They went out and monkey wrenched the sound, turned us like because the crowd was going absolutely berserk when yeah. we were playing. So all of a sudden, the sound is cut in half. You know, their sound man goes out and monkey wrench, you know, really full limit, just like you know, boom, everything goes, <laughs> the bottom falls out, right? And we're like, okay, what's going on? We're being screwed. So, and I didn't think they'd do that. Like, they were, you know, they were the big quintessential punk rock band at the time, except for the pistols. But, yeah. you know, we figured, hey, punk rock bands don't do that to each other. You know, we're like brothers here, right? Or supposedly, <laughs> right? And uh, so this went on. Finally, we get off stage, and Joe was so mad. Like, he went upstage and uh, upstairs in the dressing room. They gave us, like, a broom closet, like, you know, on the fourth floor of the gardens <laughs> <laughs> dressing room. That's right? nice of them. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very, very nice of them to do that. <laughs> So then we come down to try and go and get some food and a, and a, and a beer, and they've got these two gorillas standing in front of the catering room. No, nope, clash only, clash only. So now we're like, this is this is it, this is the end. And uh, <laughs> so word sort of gets out into the crowd that we're being screwed, right? So people are picking up on this really quickly, and uh, the clash come on, and uh, some friends of mine, a couple of girls that I know, they climbed up the PA. And uh, they're trying to get them down. They can't get these two little 18-year-old girls down off the PA. So Laura's up there, and Mick Jones is calling her a bitch and this, that, and the other thing, right, screaming at her. So she takes a big wad of bubble gum, and he's in the middle of playing. It's the only time I think they ever played Joe Guitar Doors live, and he's just doing his <laughs> Mick Prance thing. And she fires this big wad of bubble gum, and it sticks right to his last paw, right on the top three strings, right? <laughs> well, now he's absolutely irate, and he's like, you know, like the crowd started going a little bit crazy when that happened. So all the security went up there. So now there's nobody on the door watching the catering room. So Joe and me and uh, uh, Zippy Pinhead, which I don't know if you know, a crazy guy. Yes. We go in. We start raiding the food. Well, Zippy throws a prawn at me. It starts with a prawn. <laughs> becomes potato salad. Joe picks up a salmon. And, and now the whole thing is gone. Like the food is no longer on the table. It's on the floors, on the walls, <laughs> everywhere. So it. let's get out of here, right? So we grab <laughs> all their buckets of wine and beer, right? And go back up and just lock the door again. So now Mr. Bouncer Dude comes back to the door. You know, he's guarding the room. Well, they come off stage. And now they walk in to go go relax, and their food spread is everywhere. So their, their <laughs> night is horrified, right? <laughs> Mick Jones comes up to our closet, our broom closet dressing room to see what's going on, and there's a sign on the door that says, The Clash Sucks, signed Jay Shithead. <laughs> I considered Mick a good friend at that time, but I think that sort of uh, that sort of put an end to that friendship. And uh, 